when you set this up for yourself, what are you after? Now remember I said we're coming into polarized systems, so you have to experience both sides. Mm -hmm. Nikki, how do you know what hot is? Because I touch, experience it, and... How do you know? Oh, well... How do you know what's hot? How would you know? Like if I say, if you say, oh, this is hot, how would you know? How do you know what hot is? Because you experienced cold? Yeah. You know what hot is because you've experienced cold. Cold. Would you fully understand no. hot no. if you had not experienced cold? No. Would you, you fully understand? No. No, you wouldn't. Okay. So catch that phrase. How how do you know what kindness is? When you experience unkindness, the opposite, yeah. Because has someone been unkind or cruel to you? Yeah, okay. Hopefully it wasn't me. <laughs> because you've experienced the opposite. So here's the deal. When you come into this life, you set it up in birth that you're imprinted with the opposite of what you are here to learn. This is so deep, and if you get this, this could free somebody tonight. Seriously. No, seriously. Let me repeat that. Okay, stay with me because I've been setting it up the whole time, y'all. Every word is essential. When you came into this life, remember, this is polarized system. You set it up so that you can experience the opposite of what you came here to experience. Wow. Your life curriculum is the opposite of what you experienced as a child. Now, <clears throat> you came here... Let's say this, for example. You came here to learn if your curriculum was unconditional love. You want to know what unconditional love was. Can you know unconditional love without knowing? Conditional love. Can you know unconditional love without knowing? Conditional, conditional love. love. Conditional love. So in your growing up environment, everything that you experience will be conditional. And it won't feel good. It'll hurt you to varying degrees. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you came here to know unconditional, all right, you came here. If your curriculum is freedom, you will come into an environment in which you will feel enslaved. Yeah. You will grow up feeling enslaved. The condition, the, the intention, that's in motion for you to have the condition that forces you in the direction of what you came here for. Without that, you won't have a direction and you will be purposeless and nothing in the world is purposeless. Your life is not purposeless. Every single one of you before you came here had a pre-birth intention. And you must be in alignment, check this out. If you're not in alignment with your intention, you always feel like something in your life is off. Mm. Mm. Most of the people in the world today <laughs> feel like that. Mm -hmm. are lost and they try to fill it with money, with people, with jobs, with fame, with fortune, good fortune, right? I saw a question in hand, I saw a question in hand, Felicia. I, I can speak? Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if I was interrupting. No, no, go ahead. I have known anyone who knows me and my daughter's attested to those who have, have is met her. I am known as a unicorn. So it had to have been that I came in here wanting to know what it's like to live in a positive environment. So the joke was, how could I have been born through someone who was such a negative Nelly? Oh, I'm telling when she said it, the light bulbs went up. My entire family, everyone is an Eeyore in the family. Everyone. <laughs> Excellent. Like Eeyore. Life is hard. Why is it like this? Right. Every single person in my family. Exactly. Except for me. Now, what's really interesting, and in, 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 would someone like to explore that? I want to have. Who, who, who's that? Who, who, who has felt, okay, someone who's willing to be vulnerable in front of the group? This is a small group, actually. So we're all family here. Nobody's many, we're all family. Would someone like to come up and explore their core in front? If they feel like they really just don't know. I mean, I'm open if someone's, someone's willing to come up and explore their... I know, you got this Okay, I'm going to have you come up, honey. Come up. Yeah, come up. Why don't we sit here? I'm just going to ask you some questions. Now, you guys, as I'm talking to her, observe, pay attention, but I also want you to ask yourself questions, too. You see, you see what I'm saying? So this is a process to help you. If you if, if, especially if you felt directionless, or you feel like you're just always trying to find yourself or something, right? Okay, so... 
Where were you born? Uh, Lo uh, Los Angeles, California. Okay, when were you born? Um, you don't have to give your age, but I'm just giving um, you uh, 70s, 80s, 90s? No, 60s. Okay, 60s, okay. 60s, the era that you were born into, 60s was a time of revolution. Yes. Right. <laughs> you came in during a time of revolution. Beings who came in during a time of revolution were revolutionary beings, mm. okay? Mm. 60s, the 70s, a time of great change, were women. Were they burn bras in the 70s, mm -hmm. right? In the 80s, what, what were we doing in the 80s? What was the 80s about? Disco yes, and yeah. free love and all that, right? Mm -hmm. 70s too. Really okay, so excess. Excess, excess, excess. okay, That's very good. Too. So one of the things I forgot to say that's really important, the, the time, the date, the date and the month you were born. Science always poo-pooed this thing called astrology, and there's been a lot, but, but science is now reevaluating that because science has now proven that when you're born, the planetary alignment affects the neurons in your brain. That is why people in January have this particular disposition in their personality. That's why you can say, oh, Gemini's are somewhat, mm. and people will know all day long, mm. right? Mm. Libras are kind of like this. Cancers are kind of like this. Mm. Leos are kind of like that. Because when you were born, which by the way, <laughs> exactly when you were born, latitude and longitude, essential. Because you needed to have certain aspects of your personality. Amber, going back to Amber, I'm actually glad this is not racing right now. <laughs> Maybe this all worked out, right? Amber needed, needed the DNA from these people because it gave her specific tendencies, proclivities to personality traits that she needed that these two people didn't have. That's absolutely true. Okay? It's important. Stay with me on this now. Okay, so you were born in the 60s. You came during the time of revolution. You were born in L.A. Tell me about your mother. My mom is an artist. Um, she was, she married my dad like he was her first. She was very naive. My dad was very militant. Our name, we went to African schools. Okay. We spoke Swahili. My name's Tamani. It means strong black woman. Um, revolution. That's so weird. That's so crazy. Now, if you're listening to what she's saying and you've been listening to what I'm saying, you're going to start seeing the manifestation of pre birth attention here. We're going to help her even go deeper. Um, my dad was. You know, very you know, pro-black. We use you know our name. You know, we all have me, my brother, and my sister. We all have the same middle name. Um, but then Bless you. the lies started coming in, the deception. My mom didn't. I don't think my dad was on drugs, but I think my dad had other lives. And then he married a white woman. <coughs> And my mom and we were married for 11 years. So that, did you guys hear that? Yeah. 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 a white woman, which is just a contradiction, basically. Fine. She's breaking up contradiction. So, so he basically, I just remembered, he, he just turned his, he turned his back on me, my sister, and my brother. How old were you? Um, I want to say I really remember probably around, I'm around eight. Like, I remember, like, my mom calling me and saying my dad's going to leave, we're not going to be living with us, and we cried, and... Then I remember, like, we would see him occasionally, but I just remember, I always remember my mom in her room crying. I knew it was something to do with my dad. Wow. How, did you, how did you feel? I felt sad for her, and I didn't know what was going on, and it's like, I felt like she would, wouldn't talk about him, like, oh, your dad's an ass, but she would, I, I could, from that point in my connection to her, I could feel that I knew she wanted him to be a part, and he didn't want to. Okay, how did that feel to you? Now, when I now here now here, because we're, you're going with the dad, so this is good because it's the opposite sex parent. I feel when you think, of, did you have a relationship with your dad from eight on? No, in fact, my dad my dad died uh, about a month ago. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, it's no accident that she's here tonight. It's no accident I call her on the chair. Do you see how everything's working right. tonight? You guys pay attention. The synchronicity is happening here tonight. Mm -hmm. So, I feel. How did you feel from eight on when you thought about your dad? What did that um, mean to you? How did I you felt process? like I didn't want to go around him. It felt sad. I felt emotional and I didn't want to feel those emotions. Like I would want to cry. I felt like an outsider. I felt like I didn't know him. I felt like he didn't want to be bothered. Okay, I like that. Thank you for sharing. I mean, I don't like that you felt that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm okay. getting real. So, <laughs> uh, how, but how did it make you feel? It made, made me feel sad. 
Give me more words than sad. Um, it made me feel like I didn't have a father that cared about me the way that, like, you would see other kids' parents treat their kids. Okay, so eight years old, there's some unique things that happen beyond the age of seven in her brain. This has happened at a very unique time for her in her life. Up until the age of eight, what was your relationship with your dad? I mean, it was, you know, I'm going to be honest, I really don't remember his presence. I just remember my mom. You know how, like, like that mother that is always in the house and the father's just there, but he's not really connected to you? Okay, so, okay, okay, yes, very much so. So... In this moment, if we're going to find her core imprint, this is gonna be a big part of it. Said as a pre-birth intention, the trajectory of her life changed when her father left. Would we not all agree? Yeah. It did not change not only her mother's life, but it deeply impacted her life. Mm -hmm. So why do I keep asking her how she felt? Why do I keep doing that other than to badger her here in front of her on the chair? Not to badger her, but the feeling tone, because the soul thinks in feelings. It doesn't conceptualize. Okay. So all the when we're adults, we conceptualize and we can talk about it and we well, you know, I see there's a there's a but the feeling of it is not a conceptualization, it's a feeling. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking her to use the words I feel. I feel, I feel. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> when you thought, think about your father, your relationship with your father, eight, nine, ten, fifteen, twenty-five. I feel. She's using the word sad. I want, I'm wanting to pull. Abandoned. Mm -hmm. Does that resonate with you? I, that and anger. Okay. Okay. Anger. Tell me more. I'm trying to. Um, just, just give me as many. When you think about your father, just as a. Um, I think about. Did you feel rejected? I did, but I think you have to realize my mom was so the alpha and the omega. She pr protected me against that rejection, and she would do this. So it's like it didn't feel so bad because I had her, and she was everything. So she made up for him not being there. And then when you don't have something, you don't know what it feels like. I never had a dad, so I don't know what it would feel like. You hear stories. You hear friends talk about, you hear see movies, but when you don't have it, you don't really know what it's like. Okay, but this is interesting though. I like even that you said that because what does that feel like? Even if you don't have a father, you see other people having fathers and you feel something. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. simply because you don't have one, yeah. right? Because yeah. you didn't have one. Right. So what I'm endeavoring to do, and what's really important in this process, is to pull out that feeling tone. Mm -hmm. I have not heard yet the feeling per se, because what I'm, what we're, what I'm, I, I, the specific thing that I'm trying to pull out is her core imprint. Because when she says that, when she talks, sometimes you have to free flow. Mm -hmm. I felt rejected. I felt abandoned. Someone used the word abandoned. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that these were all your feelings, but right, I'm saying right. I'm endeavoring to pull out, a, a, a pull out emotions enough so that I can get the core print on her energetically. Because, guess what? At the end of the day, that's going to, opposite is going to be her life intention. The opposite is going to be her life intention. The key way to figure out what your life intention is to look at like the first seven years of your life, your childhood, where you were imprinted. You see, does that, does that, yeah. does that, is that, is everybody with me already? Yeah. Am, I, yeah. am I making sense yeah. here? Yeah. I have a question. So when you're saying, because you said, it's interesting that you said, oh, he wasn't around, you know, it felt like he wasn't around, my mom was always there, but yet you did say, oh, he was this militant kind of guy. So like you are, like it was something that you already felt with that. <laughs> did you as a kid have anything um, that you experienced with regards to like, raised through your skin or because your parents were so about African this and African like did you know other kids um, or anything? No, I think what felt uncomfortable was when he got married to the the we started dating white women and would make a lot of racial jokes. And like to me it was uncomfortable because it was like you're basically putting down your woman, making fun of her in front of us and I didn't understand that. I thought that was kind of strange. I don't see like for me it wasn't a black and white thing. I was I didn't feel it wasn't, the anger wasn't about you're dating a white woman because we were raised militant. It just was more so, that had nothing to do with it. The, the issue was like, you don't, you're not standing up for us. You're not here. You're not involved. You're not making me feel like you want to, like on our weekends, I felt like he couldn't wait for a Sunday night 
so they can go home. Because mm-hmm. okay. I'm sick of that. But we're, 